This is a 4x4. Okay, it's not a quote-unquote real 4x4, but you know what I mean. It's a 4x4. Here's the thing, though. This isn't the 4x4 that this video is about, as you may have been able to tell based on the thumbnail. So, a couple weeks ago, for my 200 puzzles video, I unboxed the YJ Mini 4x4, and it is faster than my main. This is my main, it's an Aosu. But I had no real need for a tiny 4x4 that I wouldn't really be comfortable speed solving, so naturally, I irreversibly changed it. <laughs> What's up guys, it's Lord of the Cubes, and this video is about my second ever puzzle design. The Triacus Tetrahedron 4x4, aka Triacus Megamorphix. This puzzle was inspired first by the fact that I had a 4x4 lying around waiting to be turned into something, and of course, also by the Gegamorphix, not the 4x4 version, but the 5x5 that I unboxed in the same video. Because the way this balances is very interesting. It's super pillowed, so it's at that midway point between balancing on the tetrahedral faces or the square, like, quote unquote centers because it's actually a 5x5 five five, so it actually can very easily balance like this sort of on like this edge here like on one side of it I don't know how to describe it it's it's like off center and I realized that a triacus tetrahedron shape would work the same way and then suddenly I was like oh my god I know what I'm going to do with the 4x4 four four. so here it is here is the triacus megamorphix the name of course comes from the 4x4 four four tetrahedron being called a megamorphix and this is a triacus tetrahedron so how did I make this puzzle it's actually really easy believe it or not out of all the things to design, a simple extension mod like this is quite possibly the easiest one, as long as you don't alter the mechanism in any way. All I really had to do was create a 56mm cube in on shape, create a triacus tetrahedron just large enough to engulf it, and then subtract the cube from the triacus tetrahedron, then just add the 4x4 cuts and do some rounding off of the edges and adding clearances. Clearances are basically the tiny amount of space in between the pieces. Usually people will do 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters, if I'm correct, but it can also vary largely between designs. The clearances on my first square three were very large, and that's why it was so rattly. This came out very well, I'm gonna show the turning in a second, but I just wanna say, Gyroscope, I'm 98% sure I'm finally getting the name right, um, designed this, the Rhombic Triconticadron Megamix a while back, and because of the clearances being just the right size, so it looks like it still comes together, but the puzzle actually has barely any contact space, because of that, it turns super well. There's barely any added friction from the original Megamix. So I actually asked um, Gyroscop how he did the clearances for this puzzle. So again, thank you to Gyroscop. This, this is so, I can't get over how cool this is. Anyway, here's what the turning looks like. It's actually like somewhat speed solvable. The outer layers feel almost exactly the same as the outside of the original puzzle did, the outer layers of it. And the inner layers have like a tiny bit of friction added from the 3D printed parts. But for the most part, it actually turns really nicely. And of course it's still magnetic, which makes the layer alignment very, very easy. Solving this is actually basically the same as a 4x4 super cube in that every piece on this puzzle is unique. It's not like a 4x4 where all these centers are the same no matter how I turn them. Even these two centers here which look identical, if you swap their positions they'll actually be flipped so you'll be able to visibly tell the difference. So I actually really enjoy solving this unless I get PLL paired. This is the color scheme that I went for, just like made this pretty quickly so I could get to stickering it. Rather than using a cream side I chose to use this like maroon side. In a future video someday I will be going over why I do this, but that day is not today. I just think it looks better, I don't know. On a normal Megamorphix, you can actually checkerboard the puzzle, just kind of using the same algorithm you would on a normal 4x4 to checkerboard four sides, just like this. And on the Triacus Megamorphix, you can also checkerboard it. Depending on how you do it though, it might turn out differently. There are multiple different kinds of checkerboard patterns, so what I'm doing right now. This is the first one right here. This is numero dos. And this is the third one. Let me know in the comments which checkerboard you like best. And I'm gonna end off this video with some pretty big news. Actually, two big newses. Number one is that as of the day of uploading this, 
Tomorrow is my 18th birthday, and I would love to hit 2k subscribers before I become a legal adult. Please just subscribe, it would, it would make my birthday. We're not going for 2k, we're just trying to beat a B-Cuber in that subscriber race. And number two is that you can actually get your hands on one of these yourself if you have a 3D printer and enough money to buy a mini 4x4. That's right, I'm releasing the file so you can print one of these yourself. It has been available on Thingiverse for about a week. I doubt any of you noticed it, because you're probably not regulars on Thingiverse, but I published the files for this. And you know what? Since this puzzle is speed solvable, if you do make one of these, I challenge you to actually speed solve it and, like, at me in the video or something, because I want to see this. Fair warning though, as I learned while making this, Putting a 4x4 four four together is the worst kind of pain ever, and I would not recommend doing it. This is my second puzzle design. Make sure to check out the video on the square 3. If you have not yet seen it, it'll be in the playlist on the end of the video. This is actually version 2 because number 1 sucked. And yeah, that's all I have to say for this video. On that note, this is Lord of the Cubes, signing off. Oh, shoot!